We had a long call this morning, a uh, conference call with the president, vice president, uh, many, many governors. Uh, good conversation. The call lasted over an hour. Uh, the president was very complimentary about what governors are doing uh, around, around the country. Good, candid discussion. We continue to hear from people in Ohio. We continue to hear from elected, elected officials. Um, we have some things that, uh, orders that we're issuing today that uh, Dr. Acton will be issuing. Uh, the following uh, will all be closed uh, as a business close today. Our fitness centers and our gyms. Bowling alleys, public rec centers, movie theaters, most of them are enclosed. Uh, indoor water parks, indoor trampoline parks. So they will all close under the order of the Department of Health. Dr. Acton has a close of business today. We continue to evolve. Uh, every day we continue to have more facts. Uh, we process more information. CDC guidelines uh, have changed in regard to mass congregations, mass meetings. Saw they would change to 50 before they admitted 100. Uh, we will comply with that. Uh, our, we will, conf better words, conform. We will conform our order. Uh, and so we will modify our order from 100 to 50. Uh, throughout this crisis, we have this facts as we know them change. We have tried to follow the best science and the best information from the best people uh, that we have. And so that continues. It is clear that tomorrow's in-person voting does not conform and cannot conform with these CDC guidelines. We do not conduct this election tomorrow in person voting for 13 hours tomorrow um, and conform to these guidelines. We have received calls. Um, the Lieutenant Governor and I have talked to people from throughout Ohio who frankly are very conflicted. Uh, conflicted in whether they vote tomorrow. We continue to stress that people 65 years of age and older should not leave their home unless absolutely, absolutely necessary. We Again, we'll say that today, Dr. Acton will talk today about that. So it is people 65 and older, uh, also people who have any kind of medical, they're compromised medically. Uh, we know from what we have seen uh, in other countries, from the data that we, best available data we have, that they are certainly most at risk. These individuals are conflicted, and it's not just those 65 years of age. Right? Uh, it's women who are pregnant. It's people who uh, are compromised medically. We should not force them to make this choice. A uh, choice between their health and their constitutional rights and their duties as American citizens. Further, we should not be in a situation where the votes of these individuals who are conflicted are 
cost of the process. It is therefore my recommendation, uh, after talking with the Secretary of State, talking with the Attorney General, talking with the Lieutenant Governor, that voting be extended until June 2nd, that no in-person voting occur today, but rather that in-person voting occur on June 2nd, but between now and then, that absentee ballot voting be permitted. This should extend the period of time so that people will not have to choose between their constitutional rights and their health. This was not a decision that was easily made. Uh, like every, at least like most of the decisions that we've had to make. But it is, I believe, the right thing to do. I understand, uh, I can say this from my personal experience as a candidate many times, um, that win or lose, you're always looking forward to election day. Um, you obviously prefer winning, but you're anxious to get it over with. Uh, this extends it, and I fully understand this changes a lot of people's plans. Uh, but I think it's the right thing to do. Now, I do not have the power uh, to extend an election, as I am suggesting. Um, my understanding, and I will paraphrase the statute, that this only can occur uh, if we are debating. I have jokingly, not so jokingly, said to our lawyers, I think we've been debating. Uh, but I think we all know that was not the intent of, of what the law says. That was not what was envisioned, although this certainly is an invasion. Uh, therefore, there will be a uh, lawsuit filed in Common Pleas Court in Franklin County today um, by individuals who are in that position or similar position to what I have described. We would hope um, that that suggestion in that in that filing, uh, and I'll, I'll let Frank LaRose talk about this in more detail, but that filing would contain uh, the essence of what I, I just said. Uh, we'd anticipate that a judge would hold a hearing, uh, and we would then move, move on from there. Um, It is important, and I'm going to turn it over to the uh, Secretary of State, who has done an amazing job, uh, and his workers and boards of election, and uh, a message for all those who work in local boards of election. Uh, you've done a phenomenal job. Um, we know that this decision is difficult, but I want to just congratulate you for what you have done. Um, a couple of additional comments. We cannot tell people, as we are telling them, and as Dr. Acton will be saying in a few moments, that they really, really need to stay home, and that's in the best interest of their health, that the risk is high, and at the same time, tell them to go vote. We may also say that we have, uh, Frank tells me, uh, what, Frank, 35,000 poll workers, something in that vicinity. Um, these are people who are going to be there 13 hours or more. Uh, these are people who are going to be in contact with a lot of people that day, tomorrow. Uh, many of these poll workers are older. Uh, and again, when we think about putting them together with so many people, uh, it is frankly uh, not fair to them, even though they, many of them have said, yes, we'll continue to, to do this. And some of them have done it for many, many years. Uh, we do not know whether coming through the line, um, who's been infected. Uh, conversely, we don't know if any of the workers have been infected because this is a unique, this is 
a situation where the evidence shows that people, and Dr. Atkin talked about this yesterday, when she went back and looked at the dates of the people when the onset first occurred, and there's a, there's, there's a long, and then you go back even further than that when they were infected. So there's a period of time when some people don't even don't know they're infected. And some people, you know, don't really know it at all. Uh, again, these people are carriers and may not know that. Um, I believe that uh, while this decision uh, is a tough decision, and it's a decision that I'm sure someone, many people may uh, say was the wrong decision. I, I think when we look back on this, uh, we're going to be glad we did this. Um, the rights of voters are preserved. Each voter will be given an ample opportunity to vote. The votes that have already been cast have been cast. And Frank can talk about this, but my understanding is they just not counted. They're there. They'll stay there, frozen. Uh, and then the voting for others uh, will be able to be continued. 